we start our festival days with coffee. Not everybody does, but a lot of us do. We start those days with coffee. It seemed to be a great pairing for a podcast. Bienvenue. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, where we will discover the tales, trials, and talents of Renaissance Festival performers, merchants, and diehard attendees as we journey by way of lighthearted and even at times heartwarming conversations about the Renaissance Festival world. I am your host, Theodore Jander, a.k.a. King Francois Premier. Bonjour. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. I am your host, Theodore Jander. After a few weeks off, I am excited to bring to all returning and new listeners episode 9, which is the first episode of 2023. Having completed and released several episodes, I thought I would would take the opportunity to share some more in-depth thoughts about why I am doing this podcast and why I call it Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. However, to make things fun and interesting, I have chosen to present this episode as a conversation between King Francois Premier and myself, Theodore Jander. Our chat follows the interview format utilized for upcoming episodes. Although in this episode, His Majesty will actually be the one leading the interview. All that said, enjoy this coffee talk with King Francois Premier and guest Theodore Jander. It is my pleasure to welcome Sidor Jander, creator and producer of the Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier podcast. Well met to you. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with you, Your Majesty. Sidor, as coffee is a part of this podcast, I like to start off with a few questions about coffee and perhaps a few other, how do they say, getting to know you questions before we move into our conversation about all things Renaissance Festival. So, to begin, if you are a coffee drinker, How do you take your coffee and do you have a favorite roast? I am very much a coffee drinker and I prefer my coffee typically with, I usually use some cream, not necessarily sugar, maybe some some stevia. And as far as the roast goes, I tend to stick mostly with a dark roast. Part of it is the the caffeine level in dark roast isn't as much. And I just prefer to not have the caffeine jitter, so I stick with the darker roast. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the answer. So... Tell us about your favorite coffee shop. Where is it located? And what makes it your favorite coffee shop? What do you like about it? My favorite coffee shop is Picasso's. And it is located, there are actually two locations, both in St. Charles, Missouri. One is on the main Main Street, St. Charles. And then the other one is located on the area known as the Streets of St. Charles. Both are warm and welcoming. The staff are terrific. The coffee is outstanding. And one of the cool things about 
both locations, with it being Picasso, so named after the artist, is that each location displays a local artist's work for a month. It's two separate artists at the location. So the one on the streets of St. Charles is one artist and the one on Main Street is another. It's the coffee, it's the ambiance, and that's what keeps me coming back. Brilliant. Thank you very much for, for sharing that information. It's a wonderful thing to be able to experience such a welcoming environment in, into a coffee house. If if you could have coffee with any historical figure, who, who would you choose and why? I would have to say you, King Francois Premier. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm very humbled. I really would. Having done research into your life, uh, your reign as King of France, etc., I just really like to to know your take on on what the history books present about you and to know how you perceive those events. So so having spoken of of this research that you did for f about me uh, that leads then because my understanding is that you portray moi for the St. Louis Renaissance Festival uh, is and that is correct yes it is that's correct and so yeah I portray you King Francois Premier. So that being said tell me tell me the story then about how you fell in love with renaissance festivals well the renaissance has always been of interest to me I and mean, even as a little kid I, I was always fascinated with castles and knights and all of that stuff obviously from the middle ages through the renaissance as i was going through my undergraduate studies particularly in music, I really fell in love first with the music of the Renaissance. That ultimately led me to a Renaissance festival. I was in the Chamber Singers Ensemble at Missouri State University in, in the fall of 1996. We had gone to the Kansas City Renaissance Festival. And I just remember leaving early from from Springfield, Missouri, which is where the school is located. Traveling up to Kansas City, stopping off, we put on our costumes. It was a gorgeous fall morning, cool, crispness in the air, the sun was shining. We pull up into the parking lot. My My jaw dropped because there was this almost castle-like facade. It wasn't even so much a facade. I mean, it was, it was a building. It was a gate that had towers on each side. And you could see tops of the buildings. And, and when, we, when we gathered together to go over some logistics with, with, our, with the choir director, you could smell the, the cooking smoke. or uh, I mean, it could have been mixed in with the smoke from a blacksmith to see the sights and sounds of the Renaissance Festival. It was like being back in time. And to see the other performers, to be able to perform ourselves and to have people watching us and right there. I and mean, when we were singing, I mean, the people were right there. I mean, they, and, and when we were done, we were able to talk with, with the people that were watching us and, and to walk around and, and take in all of the sights and sounds and, and a lot of cases or in a lot of ways you could say it was love at first sight. That is a absolutely a, a wonderful experience that, that you had uh, in your first introduction to the Renaissance festivals. So I would imagine that Having had that experience, that you 
continued to either attend Renaissance festivals, perhaps becoming involved. Is this correct? Yes, I I had gone back the next year, same weekend that the group was there. I was at that time living in St. Louis, Missouri, traveling Kansas City to go. Then in the fall, or rather not the fall, but the spring of 1999, the... St. Louis Renaissance Festival started. I remember going out there a weekend. I had some friends from from school who were involved. Then the next year is is when they had asked me to to join. Before we go any further with that, in, in one or two sentences, describe what it is that you do as a performer in the Renaissance Festival world. I have been involved with the St. Louis Renaissance Festival since the spring of 2000. I now and have been since 2002 been portraying the King of France. And so that has been the primary role that I have had in the Renaissance Festival world. I've attended a handful of other Renaissance festivals just as a patron or patron because I have gone in garb. So you you did answer uh, my next question uh, is about as far as how long you have been performing uh, with the Renaissance Festival. You mentioned becoming king, and that is the primary role. Now, is this a role that that you stepped right into, or or what was the process for you to to become the king of France? I have been. Uh, performing with or been involved with the St. Louis Renaissance Festival for 22 years. My first year, I, as I had mentioned, I joined with the encouragement of some classmates, showed up to one of the first rehearsals, found out that it's a French Renaissance Festival, had to learn a French accent, I'll need new garb because the garb that I had, one of the, well, the shirt or chemise that I had, had lace cuffs, which would not have been a thing. The cape type thing that I wore had a huge sequin brooch on it that had been sewn onto it that the the costume folks were were like, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, but I was happy to to have new garb made. They were looking for the Dauphin, so the heir to the throne. Even though I was quite a bit older, they figured I could pass for for him. I became, in my first year, I was the heir to the throne. I was the prince of France, Prince Francois II. And then the next year... Uh, my predecessor, who at the time was playing Francois the First, his son was closer in age and was going to be involved. So he then portrayed Francois the Second. I was still involved in the court aspect, but portrayed uh, Anne de who's who's the who was the master of the royal household. Then through. There were some things that had transpired after the season of 2001. I received, uh, it was either an email or a phone call from the cast director asking if I would like to be the King of France. They were moving forward in time. So at my first few years in the fair, we were in the mid-1530s. And then they were moving up to about 1549, I believe. So it would have been the very beginning reign of Henri II. Um, unfortunately, Francois II was poisoned, uh, apparently, uh, or at least that's the that's that's the story. Henri II then was 
was next in line. And so I portrayed him from 2002, essentially to 2006. I did attend the fair and was still involved with a lot of the goings on in the lead up to, I did take 2003 off when my daughter was born and, and then did come back in 2004 as Henri the second. And in 2007, they wanted to go back in time to the 1520s to the reign of Francois I. And so they asked if I would be willing to do that. The rest is history. Fantastic. Thank you so very much for, for sharing that, that, that story of how you essentially became the King of France. It is... Uh, for for any monarch, it is always a, a unique journey to to be to be certain. Uh, so uh, another question: Did your education or prior jobs to that point, uh, before becoming a performer, play a part in your involvement in Renaissance festivals? I would say yes. It was my education, having been involved with with the singing group in college was my first introduction to Renaissance festivals. So yeah, I did very much have a part in, in my becoming involved and classmates as well. Jobs, not necessarily though. I, I am one of the, the hats that I wear is I, I do teach music and, and now also teach technology that at that time, I wasn't even even teaching yet because I was just finishing school. Uh, but the teaching aspect in some ways did impact it, partly just from the music side of things in particular, especially the Renaissance music aspect. So, yeah, it education was definitely a, a bigger part of that. Excellent. Has has participating in Renaissance festivals as as a performer benefited your your job or jobs outside of the Renfair world? Absolutely. As a teacher and as a performer, um, as an artistic director for an early music vocal ensemble, all of those things in a lot of ways intertwined. Each fed the other. I, in some ways, feel like I have become a better teacher because of my experience in working and performing, being in music, being in front of classes, being in front of an ensemble. Uh, as far as the organizing teaching aspect, I've, I've utilized some of those skills as well as in the the preparations for the cast and involvement with that as well. Outstanding! Thank you so very much uh, for that that response. I, I I would imagine so, especially having been involved for as long as you have been. What is one way? So we've talked about jobs. What is one way? One unexpected way, actually, in which your performing has grown or benefited you as a person. A lot of it coincides with the job aspect. I mean, what I do is for, for a career. It's benefited me as a performer, as a teacher, as a person, but more so in that I've had the opportunity to meet so many people. So many people. And, and to have created friendships that have lasted years and, and to become a huge part of of a family because that's and, and that's been one of the unique things and, and one of the wonderful things about the renaissance festival that i've seen is that family element we could go several months without seeing each other from one season to the next. But when you walk into those first rehearsals for the new season, it's almost as if it was just, it's like it was just yesterday that we had seen each other. 
but yet there is this catching up, finding out how things are going and, and finding out how life has been and, and all of those things and and creating those bonds and, and, and that welcoming component when you walk into rehearsal, when you walk into a Renaissance festival, when you go to another Renaissance festival and, and you can see that kind of dynamic not just among the cast and the merchants and other performers, but the patrons too. A lot of the, the people who, who return year to year or who travel to the different Renaissance festivals, there's just this welcoming energy. It's just, it's, well, that energy is, can only impact you really in a positive way. That is fantastic. Thank you so very much, Sidor, for answering uh, it, that question. So uh, I am curious, uh, as this is a Renaissance festival-oriented podcast, who would win in a joust, you or the Royal Jester, and why? Well, because I do portray you, Your Majesty, I would definitely have to say that we would, or I would, or you would, uh, um, uh, because, well, what else would a king do but win a joust? And the royal jester is, well, his skills are just really laughable, truthfully. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's just no contest really there at all. I would have to agree. Uh, very, very good answer. What are what are one or two of your favorite memories that you would like to share with with the listeners of this podcast? I, I have a few. Uh, one of them actually didn't occur at the Renaissance Festival. It actually happened at at a grocery store called Trader Joe's. Uh, it was off season. My natural hair color, I don't even think I had facial hair at the time. I asked one of the one of the employees of Trader Joe's I was looking for some or they had actually I take that back. They had actually asked me for or if there was anything I needed help finding. And I said yes, and so I described what it was that I was looking for. She walks me over into the frozen food aisle and she was looking at me a little strangely and again mind you no like natural hair color no facial hair like street clothes and she asks are you the king of france my response couldn't be anything but to say why yes yes i am the king of france I didn't feel like I looked anything like what I am during the Renaissance Festival run, so I was just really kind of enamored. So, so that is a favorite memory that came out of someone having attended the Renaissance Festival, so apparently made enough of, it, of an impact. Another favorite memory of mine is I was walking through the lanes and met a, a, a family that, and it was a little boy, uh, I, I, he, I can't imagine, maybe four or five years old, uh, maybe even younger. And I, I greeted the family and knelt down and asked the little boy how his day was going, if he's enjoying himself at the festival. He said that he was on the hunt for Easter dragon eggs. I was wanting to find out exactly what an Easter dragon egg looked like. Talked with him to figure out where he could go to potentially find an Easter dragon egg. Just the innocence, the wonder of, of just that statement, Easter dragon eggs. I mean, obviously, we're all familiar with Easter eggs, but an Easter dragon egg is not something that would have even crossed my mind to, to really think of. And it was so brilliant to hear, to hear this little boy was searching for those Easter dragon eggs and, and was, was on a hunt for them. And so just to remember that and that wonder 
in his eyes, was just really a great memory. Thank you so very much for sharing that story. So uh, as you are the actual host of this podcast, uh, what led you to create the podcast and call it Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier? As far as podcasting goes, I've had an interest in podcasting. It was really a matter of finding something that, one, interested me, also something that revolved around something in which I had experience. And then also something that could utilize the experiences not only with the Renaissance Festival, uh, Renaissance Festival, but as far as my, my teaching, performing, technology, etc. career. So then it was just a matter of coming up with or discovering the why for a podcast. And that came about because I had already begun the process of like, okay, you know, what are some podcast options? These are some things that I could potentially do. After one of the the Saturdays of the St. Louis Renaissance Festival, sitting in the living room of one of the merchants after having had dinner and stories were being shared I was so intrigued to hear the stories that they had to share. Then the comment was made that one of the challenges that not so much necessarily at the Renaissance Festival world is facing, but those folks who have been involved with the St. Louis Renaissance Festival for decades is that the stories, their experiences in some ways are being lost. A light bulb went off. I wanted to create a platform to preserve those stories and and, in a lot of ways to to discover and not just of the the veterans of the Renaissance Festival world, but those who, who are just starting out, who've only been in it for a few years and those who are looking to maybe become involved what their stories, what, what are the tales, the, the talents and the trials of those individuals, of those performers, those groups, those merchants, and to share all of that. So as far as why call it Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, having portrayed King Francois Premier for uh, since 2007, so we're looking at 15, 16 seasons, and my involvement with the Renaissance Festival world in that capacity, it made sense to utilize the the connections that I've made as far as bringing guests onto the show. And because coffee, it's almost the lifeblood of... Rennies, performers, cast, of patrons even, to have, we start our festival days with coffee. Not everybody does, but a lot of us do. We start those days with coffee. It seemed to be a great pairing for a podcast. And then to to have conversations is really the, the drive behind it. So... That's what led me to to the podcast Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. Thank you so very much, merci beaucoup for that for that response. I, I very much appreciate it. So, two final questions. First, for people considering becoming a, a vendor, performer, or even attending the fair. What is the best piece of advice uh, that you can offer? The best piece of advice is just go. Don't think about it other than how you're going to get there and all that. But but go. If you've never been, you are in for a treat. You are in for a great time. You are in for literally walking through the gates and being transported back hundreds of years and having 
a fantastic time. As far as becoming a vendor, merchant, uh, performer, same thing. If you've not been to a Renaissance Festival, go. Go to the Renaissance Festival. Take it all in. Talk to other merchants. Talk to performers. Talk to patrons. Watch what's going on and and just experience because that's what it is. It's a, it's this it can be an immersive experience and it can, it can be a, a great experience for anyone involved. So I would is literally just go to Renaissance Festival. Merci, Sidor, for that advice. I, I appreciate it. So as we bring today's coffee talk with moi, King Francois Premier to a close, where on the internet can folks find you? Uh, as I would assume that the primary Renaissance Festival for you would be the St. Louis Renaissance Festival. Yes, that, that's the primary Renaissance Festival with which I am involved. And as far as the internet goes, I do have, I actually have a, a handful of, of websites theodorejander.com. I am on Facebook, uh, Journey Begun Media. Uh, both that is on Facebook as well as on the internet. Um, I do have an account on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, those are the places that I can be found. Thank you so very much, Sidor, for taking this time out of your day to, to chat with moi. I do want to say, may your day be filled with Renaissance merriment and many blessings to you in your craft. Thank you so very much, Your Majesty. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of my story. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this unique episode. To find out more about my guests from previous episodes and your host, me, Theodore Jander, check out our links in the show notes for each episode. Stay tuned for next week's episode to be released on Friday, February 3rd, where I, I will bring you a shorter-than-usual episode highlighting the names and upcoming dates of some Renaissance festivals. Even though it is winter, a Ren Fair or several can be found here in the U.S. where young and old alike can create delightful and long-lasting memories. If you are a performer, merchant, or die-hard patron in or of the Renaissance Festival world and would like to be featured on Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, reach out to me by way of clicking on the following link provided in the show notes. www.theodorejander.com slash coffee talk podcast. Would you like to receive early access every week to each new episode, as well as receive a behind-the-scenes glimpse into the production and creative process for the podcast? If so, join the wonderful community of listeners supporting the show and making new things possible through Patreon. Learn more at www.patreon.com slash coffee talk with King Francois. The link will be provided in the show notes. Thank you so much for tuning in to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. A bientôt. See you soon. Ciao for now and au revoir.